continuing with our discussion on cloud computing now we are going to look at uh, the architectures and models uh, which are adopted in cloud computing we are going to be very specific because uh, instead of being generalized and following some research articles uh, i would refer to the itut recommendations y.3536 which is the standardization document which was adopted in year 2022 and uh, uh, this helps us to um, make sure that uh, we are going to look at all the possible aspects that the scientific community would have thought over because standardization documents are pretty robust then we are going to look at an entity called the cloud service broker and we are going to break down it into its logical components um so the cloud service broker which is essentially a sub role of the uh, cloud service network and the cloud service provider um it negotiates between the customer or the consumer and the provider uh, so what does it negotiate it facilitates or translates the uh, requirements of uh, services in terms of their uh, uh, technical functional uh, definitions for that it arbitrates the services which are solicited by the uh, customer and which are provided by the uh, provider it then ensures the delivery and uh, the overall management customization and uh, possibly alteration um the broker also helps to establish a logical um, independence between uh, more than one uh, csps that is the providers for a single consumer so that is essentially the responsibility of an intermediary known as the broker the logical components of the broker could be as simple as uh, in the workspace which is the customer premises equipment uh, the the product catalog or the listing of all the services which are available on the uh, provider's site then if there's a need for initiating a service a contract has to be established between the two entities and uh, then the service is accessed and the service is managed the entire service delivery life cycle is what the broker primarily looks into uh, now we are going to look at the uh, standardization definition of uh, all these components which are defined in more detail in uh, uh, y.3506 um so we have the workspace in the workspace we would have uh, a uh, user authentication and authorization uh, which is the first thing to do and then the account creation account management uh, both for the consumers as well as the providers because the cloud network is going to uh, provide the service not only to the consumers but also to the providers who are interested in offering different types of services over a publicly available cloud then the user interfaces both for the consumer as well as for provider are defined here in the workspace which would include the provision of uh, searching for a particular type of service selecting a service uh, managing and paying for that particular service from the provider end uh, uh, likewise it's going to be the offering of certain range of services by a certain provider which has to get these registered then we have the product catalog that is the range and the array of services for that the uh, uh, cloud has to ensure through the broker that the services are properly registered and if these services are utilized or have reached their maturity or their business uh, life cycle then these services have to be deregistered and uh, uh, denotified then correspondingly uh, the product catalog also has to uh, make sure that some new services are uh, able to be enlisted over the uh, broker and then uh, the services have to be offered by the provider to the consumer in the form of a standardized template agreeable to all then these cloud services uh, have to be uh, ensured by the provider as well as the consumer that the template actually has been adhered to uh, then of course the search and then the best fit and if there is a need to alter the service in the wake of mobility for example that has to be provided then uh, the contract which is an essentially a very important uh, uh, component of the uh, broker 
So uh, contract essentially includes the uh, particular service type and service category based charging and uh, uh, then the configuration of uh, the cloud service by picking up the essential elements which would fit into the contract. Then uh, the service level agreement which is actually the uh, service level objectives in the jargon of cloud computing. Then um, the, the, the service, service like agreement document management that is a copy of it has to be provided to CSP, the provider, the consumer and the network. Uh, then the uh, description uh, or the schema of the particular type of uh, um, service level uh, document which has to be agreed upon by the three entities. And if there is a what if situation, if the smooth execution of service is not met, then uh, the failover or the backup uh, actions have to be initiated. Uh, then uh, we have the uh, access management. Essentially, this would involve uh, uh, the delivering of uh, cloud services upon a request. And then um, the service would actually uh, um, be activated on the cloud. So the resources have to be activated uh, on a CSP. Uh, then uh, the information is shared between the consumers by the providers and then the uh, once the service has been provisioned or if there is let's say a shortage of uh, um, let's say revenue or the pre-registered uh, payment at the consumer end if that is uh, uh, found to be less then correspondingly the prohibition of a service once the consumer hasn't paid for it then last but not the least the uh, the service management service management would involve a plethora of uh, um, activities which would involve uh, um, uh, the service monitoring and um, the delivery of services uh, and the change of services uh, if the consumer makes a request um, to uh, alter the service and then the validation of results, for example, if a service has been properly executed, if it has been run successfully, or it has erred, or uh, if it is being under-provisioned or being uh, uh, over-provisioned, then uh, some kind of validation or acknowledgement mechanism, uh, then uh, uh, periodic maintenance or the checking, uh, and then the entire historical or the uh, temporal chronological uh, track record of the services which have been running and then the sharing of summarized uh, information with the consumer as well as the provider and again the anomaly detection and anomaly addressal and then uh, once the service has been properly concluded uh, the closure of the service and if the service is not uh, meant to be provided to the user let's say due to the shortage of funds then the service has to be prevented to be provided by the um, provider. Now the reference again is a standard document. It is uh, uh, ITUT wide or 3536. Uh, it was very recently published, but it is being enforced.